Good morning and welcome today for our lesson together. We are going to be in Philippians chapter 2. We're going to look at verses 12 and 13 today. Uh, this is continuing Paul's encouragement to the Philippian believers to uh, be joyful, to have the certainty of their hope rooted and grounded in Christ alone. And then that hope that's rooted and grounded in Christ to have that show through in us, through, show through in our lives, in our words, in our deeds, in our attitudes, in our, in our ambitions. Um, as we get into the passage this morning, let's first start and ask the Lord to help us, to guide us, and to speak to us as we pray. Let's pray. Lord, come. Be glorious and glorified in our lives. We rejoice and celebrate you. For you are our life, our hope, our standing before the Father. O oh, Holy Spirit, speak now through this, your holy word, and apply it to our life with relevance and with power, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So Paul has been talking about the example of Christ, the example that Christ is, and then the example that Christ becomes for us as we live in him. And he continues on then here in verse 12 of Philippians chapter 2. He says, Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, so now, not only as in my presence, but much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Now, a question I want to ask you and have you think about for, for a moment is this. Is it not sometimes exceedingly difficult to live for God? To honor God with our attitudes, with our responses, with the, the words that we say, with the, the choices and the decisions that we make. I mean, right? Am I the only one that this is not an easy thing to do? It's hard. It's difficult. It, it, it seems as though it's harder to live for Jesus, even though I love Jesus, than it is to live for self. It's much easier to live for self. Well, Paul here is pointing out something I think really, really important. He talks about, you know, my beloved, as you've always obeyed. There, there's, there's something in about an, a, an accountability that takes place when we are in the company of other believers. We, we are, we're kind of, uh, we want to please God and we feel encouraged to please God. We feel uh, as though we're held accountable to pleasing and praising God. And so Paul is saying, as you have obeyed God, so now, not only as when you're, when I'm in your presence, not only when I'm with you, but even much more when I'm not with you, honor God, praise God, serve God. And then he's, Paul uses this phrase at the end of verse 12, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Some have distorted this passage and say that somehow then Paul is alluding to and Jesus or God intends that we, we, work for our salvation. We work to be forgiven. We work to be accepted by God. We don't work for anything though. That cuts across the grain and that is diametrically opposed to what the, the word of God and the gospel is all about. We do not work for uh, God to rescue us. We work from the rescue that God has already done in us. We don't seek to earn our salvation. We put forth effort to evidence the fact that God has worked in us salvation. See, do you see the difference there? See, we're working from a place of security and certainty, not working for a place of certainty and security. When we are saved, when we are rescued, when we're born again, when we are adopted by God, when, when we become a new creation, that's not like just a promise. It's not like someone says, hey, if you do this, I will give you 
a million dollars. No, it's as if someone has already deposited that into your account and now they say, live it out. Live as the beneficiary, beneficiary of this great gift. We do not work to earn, we work to evidence. We do not work for, we work from the fact that when we in faith surrender to Jesus Christ, confess him as Lord and Savior, we are saved. It, the, the Romans says that anyone who uh, confesses Jesus as Lord and believes in their heart that God raised him from the dead, God saves. But we're to do this. And so the difficulty in some ways is not done away with, but it's reframed. And that's what Paul then gets at here in verse 13. For it is God who works in you. God is working power, strength, longing, uh, uh, ability in us. For it is God who works in you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. They may be listening as I do this teaching, but I had a church member many, many years ago said, they said to me that when, when God saved them, God changed their want to. God changes our want to. God changes the fact that, you know, we want to praise God. We want to please God. And, and that doesn't mean we don't do dumb things. It doesn't mean that we don't give in to temptation. It doesn't mean that we fly off the handle. It doesn't mean that we're not careless with our words. And, and those are all things that we should be growing to stop doing because we want to evidence, we want to work from the fact that we're a new creation in Christ. But we're going to fail. We're going to falter. We're going to fall short. And so we come back to the place of trusting Jesus. Jesus Christ, depending upon the work of his grace, knowing that God is working in us to will, to want to, and to work for his good pleasure. Friends, if you don't know Jesus, if you are trying to earn, if you're trying to make an effort for God's love for you, oh, I wish and I pray and I hope and ask and plead that you would trust Jesus and lay down your seeking to earn, your, your drive to get this, and that you would let God give it to you. And then when God, by his grace, in Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, works in you and works, works in us, our lives then are lived to show, to evidence to be a display of that which God has already done in us. For it is God who works in us, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. May God be with you. May the Spirit of God strengthen you. And may Jesus, the author and perfecter of your faith, ever be before your eyes, that he would then motivate your words and your works and your walk, that we would live to praise him. I'll see you tomorrow.